with us.
lost in the glory, the Shekinah glory of God. Just saturate the hearts and minds of people watching online. We give you praise and glory and honor, Father, as we exalt you to the highest heavens, Lord. Command your angels to take charge over us and minister to us. So I'm just going to call on uh, uh, Reverend Andrea to come and pray for everyone watching online and everyone here in the sanctuary today. And just keep in this flow of the worship. My God, it's so powerful. Thank you, Lord. Fill us, Lord. Father, we thank you for your healing anointing that is in this house, Lord God. Father, we thank you that we can receive healing, Lord God, from you. And Father, we just ask that that healing anointing, Lord God, would flow through that camera, Lord Jesus Christ. That, Father God, it would just not only flow through the camera, but also, Lord God, to those in the sanctuary. That, Father, even as we were worshiping you today, Lord God, Father, I could sense that healing anointing. That, Father God, that one that needs healing in their lungs, Lord God. That, Father God, where there's a difficulty to breathe. Father, we send forth the word of God that says, by the stripes of Jesus Christ, you are healed. That there is no distance in prayer. That we send forth the word of God. We send forth the word of God for you to receive your healing. Open your heart. Open your spirit to him. And he will bring healing to your body. We thank you, Lord God, that, Father God, even those that may have back problems and difficulty, Lord God, Father, I thank you in Jesus' name that you are bringing healing to every single muscle, every single ligament and tendon and fiber, Lord God, that, Father God, by the power of your Holy Spirit, that you are descending upon your people and bringing complete healing and restoration, not only to their spirits, Lord God, but also to their soul and their physical body. Father, we thank you for today. We thank you for this service, Lord God, that you would be exalted, that you would be glorified, Lord Jesus Christ, that, Father, we decree and declare over this ministry that no weapon formed against it shall prosper, and every tongue that has risen in judgment against it, Lord God, we condemn it now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, that even, Father God, for the leadership, for the congregation, congregation members, for those that are connected to this ministry, Lord God, every negative word, Lord Jesus Christ, today we take authority over it, Lord God, in Jesus' name, and we break it by the power of the blood of Jesus Christ and by the anointing of God. Father, we thank you for what you are establishing here in Milton. We thank you for what not only that you're establishing in the physical realm, but also in the spiritual realm. Father, we thank you for what you're establishing in each and every single one of us. We thank you for unity. We thank you for harmony. Now, Father God, we thank you, Lord Jesus Christ, that strife does not exist here, Lord God. That, Father God, there is no contention in Jesus' name. That as we come together in unity, Lord God, that is where your blessing is commanded. As we come as one, Lord God, as one in Jesus' name, for your kingdom purposes, for your kingdom callings, Lord God. That, Father God, we thank you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth that each and every single one of us has a role to play in your kingdom, Lord God, as individuals and both as corporately in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. We thank you for the exciting things that you're doing in Milton. We thank you for the families that you are touching, changing, and transforming. We thank you for the families and the, the families that you are healing, Lord Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you for the individuals that you are healing, that you're bringing healing to those wounds and to those poor hurts, Lord Jesus. And Father God, thank you, Lord God. Thank you you're bringing healing to marriages, Lord Jesus. Father, that you are a God of reconciliation, that you are a healing God, that you reconcile even us unto yourself, Lord God. Father, we thank you that as you prepare us, your bride, no spot or wrinkle, Father, we thank you in Jesus' name that you are adorning each and every single one of us, that you have not only given us gifts for the equipping of the saints, but you have also given us gifts, Lord Jesus Christ, to bring in the lost, to bring in the hurting, that as we go through this time right now in this transition, Lord God, Father, we thank you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth that you are still God. That we can turn towards you, that in the midst of what we see, Lord God, we can look up to the heavens and call out to you and cry out to you. That we can ask the Holy Spirit for direction, for guidance, for peace, for love, for restoration. Father, we thank you for the peace that is in the sanctuary. 
and even those that are watching, Lord God, may they feel the peace of God that surpasses all understanding begin to descend that whatever device that they are watching on, let the peace of God that surpasses all understanding rest upon you now in Jesus' name. And Father, even as Apostle Domenico comes forward, Father God, to bring your word, may he bring it, Lord God, with boldness, with fire, with passion, and with might by the power of the Holy Spirit not by his own strength and not by his own might, but by the power of your precious Holy Spirit, which is the third person of the Godhead. We welcome you, Holy Spirit, into this place. We welcome you here. And we welcome you to have your way. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. I just feel like we need to do another five minutes of soaking because that peace was so powerful while we're worshiping in this song. And sometimes we just need to wait on the Lord and hear his voice and let him minister and talk to us. So just soak in another five minutes, even those watching online, share with your family and friends and bring him into this place of shalom, peace, and tranquility, serenity in God's presence. Thank you. What a beautiful name, Yeshua.
blessing of the Spirit all over the room. Just for about 30 seconds, we get to minister to the Lord. Let's just give the Lord a clap, a round of applause, or hand clap, and praise God. Um, I'm excited to be here today because it's just a different shalom peace. God moves differently each time. Are you ready for more soaking? I love it. When we just soak in the presence of God, you hear His voice clearly, and that's what we need. We want to get away from all the busyness of the world and what's going on out there and come to a place which is, I call it a safe haven, amen? That's what the sanctuary should be, a place where you can go and be at peace 
and not have to deal with any drama of the world. So praise God that here's a, supposed to, I believe, starting today, Lord God, it's a new level of peace, a deep peace. I see like the glory, Shekinah glory of God, or uh, even like a, a river of peace just flowing through, Father God, and those who want to just jump in the river of your shalom peace will experience a, deep, a deeper peace. They'll have greater dreams and visions, Father God, and a deeper sleep, a better sleep. Wow, thank you, Lord, for those that have been having trouble sleep. We break that now in Jesus' mighty name. We deliver you from all insomnia. Father, we repent, Father God, for not trusting in you. Worry is not of the Lord. It's actually a sin. So we repent of the sin of worry, anxiety, and stress, supernaturally taken away from your people, Lord God, that we may experience the Prince of Peace and the peace which surpasses all understanding is in Christ. Amen. You will keep your mind in perfect peace. I want to get into a word today just called the life-transforming words of the Father. And I believe this will bring a lot more inner healing today because all the month of August was on supernatural healing and miracles. Praise God. Welcome all those that are coming in and joined in this presence and power and anointing today. Let's open up our Bibles to... Um, where are we going to start today? My God, there's so many scripture verses. Thank you, Lord. Uh, let's just open up to the Gospel of Matthew, and then I'll tell you where we're going to go from there. <laughs> um, anyone else have a word? Any prayer? Everyone's good. Praise God. And we had a wonderful time at our revival banquet. Sorry, barbecue and banquet, if that's what you want to call it. But outdoor last night uh, in the parking lot, we had uh, thank you, Isabel, and everyone who came. And, uh, uh, to celebrate, we had some amazing worship uh, leaders and prayer intercessors who led us in a phenomenal time. And I believe a breakthrough happened, praise God, a spiritual breakthrough happened for the whole region. Uh, and I believe that many more souls are going to come into the kingdom as a result of that breakthrough we experienced last night. But it comes down to repentance is the key to revival. God wants to sanctify us in a deeper level, and that requires surrendering all to the Holy Spirit and let Him search our hearts. Because when we have the Holy Spirit inside, He wants to renew our mind. If there's anything in our thinking process which is not correct, it has to go, it has to be removed, it has to be sanctified. My God, thank you for the refiner's fire, Lord God. Every time we come up, we go through the refiner's fire, we come up like gold. I love uh, your color yellow today, Amelia. I don't like that. I, I saw the yellow and I'm like, it looks like gold. Praise God. Amen. The, the glory of the Lord is shining on you. Amen. Arise and shine. Hallelujah. God bless you, Reggie. Thank you. And uh, Father, Rabba, So Torobo, Siki, Bosha. To get ready for prayer intercessors. We're going to pray before the end of the service. But I want to say that the message I shared last week was is the God of the Old Testament the same as the God of the New Testament? And the answer is yes. We prove that, but we're going to prove it even more deeper today. And my other question is, is God the Father, uh, does he support or reject the words and actions of Jesus Christ of Nazareth in the New Testament? And, and maybe, I, I think about a lot of these things because we've got to go deeper into Revelation. And the answer is yes, God the Father supports everything Jesus spoke and everything Jesus did in the New Testament. And that's significant because in the Old Covenant, the concept of God as Father, it, 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 it's, we see it several times, but it's not really fully developed until the New Covenant. In Jeremiah chapter 3, the Lord is called or referred to as the Father two times. And so this concept of fatherhood, which is introduced through Jeremiah and Isaiah, the Old Testament prophets, it's then finally expanded into a much greater understanding in the New Testament that we can actually call God Abba, which is Father. Amen? Or daddy, if you want to get really deep, deeper personal intimate relationship. And, and again, I said we have to upgrade to Covenant 2.0 because I feel that sometimes, when you know, this is a very, I love preaching this word of God. And I mean, after years and years and years of studying and reading and meditating on the word, we're still learning something new every day. And, and, and if you're not learning something new every day, you have to ask yourself, um... Is there something I'm doing incorrectly or has pride allowed me to stop learning? Because that's when learning is just change. You have to be willing to constantly grow. Amen. And I find when you get to the point where you say, okay, I had enough or I know it all. That means you're not, you're not at the, you've lost your humility. The proverb says a wise man learn, listens and learns and he adds to his learning. So it doesn't matter how wise you are, how mature you are in the spirit, you're always going to learn. Is this helping someone today? So I always have to say, okay, God, what do you have to show? I don't always say it this way. Um, we have to have reverence and respect for God. 
But I'm like, what more do I need to learn? And every day I'm learning something new. Every time I'm preparing a sermon, I'm like, wow, this is revelation that you may have known in the past, but now God's taking you deeper and we're going and learning more and more each, each time. So why is this so significant? Is that many people I feel today are still on covenant 1.0 where they know God is Elohim, they know God is Yahweh, they know God is these Adonai, El Shaddai, beautiful names, but do they know God as Abba, as Father? That's my question. Because God is not into, he's more into relationship than he is into religion. <laughs> God did not come to create religion, he came to create, he came to just demonstrate and bring us into a relationship with him. And that's why Christ came, the Son of God, to reconcile us to the Father and to have a perfect relationship with him. In the Old Testament, Adam and Eve heard God's voice audibly in Genesis 3.8 in the Garden of Eden. It says they walked with God in the cool of the day and God spoke with them. So they heard his voice audibly, right? Uh, uh, Moses had the same audible voice experience at the burning bush, which we preached about a few months ago, Exodus 3, 4 to 6. So Moses heard the audible voice of God, saying as Adam and Eve, and then Exodus 20, all of Israel heard the voice of God as God spoke on Mount Sinai when he gave the Ten Commandments through Moses. And so there's different times in Scripture where God speaks audibly, and, 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 but that's more rare. And a lot of times, like Elijah, he spoke in the still, small voice. That's the inner voice. Hopefully Andrew is going to teach very soon on how to hear God's voice effectively. Are you ready for that, woman of God? How many people would you would like to have Andrew come and teach a message on hearing God's voice? <laughs> she was going to preach today, and I believe it's coming soon. I have to keep encouraging her because I think, hey, let's do that. Amen. We're waiting. We're waiting. <laughs> there you go. So the encouragement is coming today from, from third heaven. Thank you, God. Um, the, the reason why is she hears the voice very clearly, and I want to know how does she know how to discern the difference between the voice of God and any other potential voices? Because do you know that some people say, thus saith the Lord, and it's not God speaking? So what does that mean? These people are deceived. Sorry, I'm just going to be blunt today because I'm like, if someone is saying God spoke to me, but it's not God, what does that mean? That means it's a different spirit. And so we have to discern between counterfeit and what is genuine. Because if you think God spoke to you something and it's not God, what does that do? It puts you into bondage because you're believing a lie now. So I always say, God, I renounce all lies and deception. If anyone spoke something and it's not of you, I cancel and nullify it. I don't want it. I reject it. I only want what's 100% from God, right? So these, you can ask immediately, we've got to pray these kind of prayers to get rid of what is not of God and only accept the truth. And sometimes if you don't say these kind of prayers, people are walking with truth on one hand, but then they've allowed lies and deception to hinder their growth because they're believed they're walking around with both. Why do you want lies and deception? Just cancel them, nullify them, and get rid of them. Amen? I know I have to say that so strongly today. I feel to someone watching online and even here that you have to examine your thought process because the spirit operates in here, right? When I ask Andrea sometimes, how do you know God said that to you? She'll say, I heard it in the spirit, not in her mind. Your mind is part of the soul. So if you're hearing thoughts in your mind, you have to question, how do I know that's God or something else? Because all these demons and all the angels, whatever, they're all operating in what I call like the soulish realm. But God operates from the spirit. He's a spirit and it's a very deep, inner, still, small voice. I think I'm taking the message you should be preaching. but Because <laughs> I, I, I question prophets. It says we have to test the spirits, right? I'm just being very casual. I feel free today. Praise God. Hallelujah. So I'm being very casual. We have to test the spirits, right, Reggie? If someone says something, how do you know what they're saying? Which spirit is putting that thought in their mind? And yeah. so I look at the scripture, right? 100%. Yeah. 100%. So if someone says something and it disagrees with the word of God, I, I reject it. I said, no, that's not the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit speaks, has to confirm with the word, right? And how do you know that if you don't even study and meditate the word? Now it's easy to be deceived because you don't even know what the word says. So people are going around calling themselves prophet and this and that and all those sorts of names. But they don't really, you can tell when someone is speaking truth, you'll get an inner witness or a confirmation. If you have the Holy Spirit and I have the Holy Spirit, should we not be in agreement? Yes. We should be in agreement, right? That's how, that's why the apostles were so powerful. One accord, nothing could stop them because they were all in the unity of the Holy Spirit. So today what I'm sensing is that many times, yes, people are speaking by the Holy Spirit, but then every once in a while you hear these things which you're like, that doesn't feel right, 
Does it make sense? And you're like, I have to just reject that. And I just, I'm, I'm saying this because if everyone humbles himself and, and really is, how can I say, if we're flowing in one spirit, we should all be in agreement. So for example, if, and, and there's some issues where, you know, it's not that simple. We have to really go to the word of God and there has to be a consensus or an agreement behind, uh, like amongst all of us. Because if you're a prophetess and you're a prophetess or prayer intercessor, no matter what your, your title or calling is, if we're all hearing the Holy Spirit, we should be in agreement. Amen? So that's just my challenge today is let's make sure that the words people are speaking or prophesying is really of the Holy Spirit and not some what I call counterfeit spirit or spirit of divination or witchcraft and all these things we need to learn and understand as we keep going. But today I want to keep it positive again and say let's focus in on the voice of God. Now let's turn to Matthew chapter 3 verse 16 and 17. And you'll see in the New Testament, God the Father only speaks a very seldom or, or just a few times like an audible voice from heaven. Most of the time he's speaking through Jesus Christ, who's the Son of God. And Jesus said, I only do what I hear my Father, what I see my Father doing or what I hear my Father saying. So like he was in perfect alignment as in what he was one with the Father. But let's turn to Matthew 3. At the baptism of Jesus, we see the voice of God from heaven. Is everyone there? Matthew 3, verse 16 and 17. It says, when Jesus was baptized, he went up immediately from the water. The heavens suddenly opened. It's a beautiful vision here. The heavens suddenly opened for him. And he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and coming down on him. And I love this, verse 17. And a voice... From heaven said, this is my beloved son, with him I am well pleased. Amen. So what does that tell you? God the Father endorsed everything that Jesus did on earth, everything he spoke. But not only that, he says, with him I am well pleased. And the Father himself is uh, um, confirming that yes, Jesus is the beloved son of God. So there's no question there. And so I'm saying the Old Testament prophets prophesied it, Jesus fulfilled it, and this is how I, this is how I will, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, expose any false religion. You know what I mean by that? If someone comes to me and says, I don't believe that Jesus is the Son of God, they're already in deception. That's false religion. Why it doesn't agree with the Word of God? So the Word of God says that Jesus is the Son of God and the Father Himself confirms that and the angels also confirm it and even the demons confirm that they said Son of God have you come to destroy us before our time. So the whole spiritual realm confirms who Jesus is. So how many religions out there can you think of that are already in deception because they don't even know the basic foundation of truth? Should I mention names? I don't know if I should mention names today, but there's a lot of people that don't understand the deity or the divinity of Christ so they're a false religion. And some people don't even call God Father. So that means they don't know the Old Testament or not even the New Testament. And again, I'm not, I don't want to, I was about to mention names, but we'll leave that for the Bible study. That you know there's big denominations, billions of people across this planet Earth who are completely deceived because they don't know the very basic foundation of God's Word. Does that, does that help? <laughs> okay, why did I have to say that? Because we want everyone born again, saved, come into the kingdom of God. And if you don't know basic Christianity 101, that's our job as evangelists is to go out and preach a very basic message. Sometimes I think we get so complicated that it even makes it more difficult instead of telling people, do you believe that God is your father? If they say no, they're not born again yet. They haven't been, they haven't received the spirit of adoption. That's why Jesus says is, when you receive the Holy Spirit, He will allow you to call God Abba Father. Isn't that awesome? Amen. And I'm saying if people are, haven't experienced that, I mean, you're going to question you. You maybe think you've been a Christian for your whole life, and if you've never called God Abba Father, and you don't feel that coming from your spirit, I'm going to question your salvation. And that's okay, because I want you to be saved. And if you are saved, you should not be offended by that. But if you're not saved, it should convict you to repent and turn to God and say, God, I want the truth. I want the true Holy Spirit, not some fake religious spirit, not some other counterfeit spirit. I want the true Holy Spirit, which will allow me to call God Abba Father. Well, don't you love that relationship? Amen. 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 Praise God. So how many times does this word Abba show up in Scripture? Three times only in Matthew 
uh, where is it here? Somewhere. <laughs> um, uh, Romans 8, 15, Mark 14, 36, and Galatians 4, 6. Twice it's by, written by the Apostle Paul. Isn't that amazing? Apostle Paul was not an original 12 apostle, but he was born again on the road to Damascus. He had a blinding light experience, and suddenly he understood what it means to go from religion to relationship. Isn't that awesome? And, and Apostle Paul was like the Pharisee of the Pharisees. He could sit there and argue and debate with all the rabbis and everything. And he knew the, the Torah, the scripture very well. But he said after he was born again in the spirit, he says, I counted all this dung compared, in comparison to the, the glory of, of Christ Jesus. So he understood that all the religion in the world is completely useless compared to the truth, the hidden treasures in Christ Jesus. Is this helping someone today? I feel we're loosing and delivering people from religious mindsets and religious spirits. And this is one of the biggest issues I feel in the body of Christ because outside of the body of Christ, it's completely different. The way the enemy operates out there is perversion and all this whole call the witchcraft and all that stuff. We know how evil and dark the world is outside of the kingdom. But now within the kingdom of God, the issues we have are different. Why? Because the enemy comes as an angel of light. He transforms himself. So now he talks about God and religion, but he's, it's, it's fake. It's not real. Am I, I think I'm going deep here. I don't know. Is everyone getting the revelation of what I'm saying? Is the way the enemy operates in the world is different than the way he operates within Christ, Christendom or within the church in walls. And so we need to have greater discernment within the body of Christ to say, you know, is this person speaking by the Holy Spirit or a demonic spirit? You want another example of this? Jesus, uh, Peter walked with Jesus for three years. And Jesus said, who do you say that I am? And, 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 and Peter says, well, you are the Messiah, the Son of God. And Jesus says, blessed are you. And I think he called him Simon of Barjona. He says, for God in heaven has revealed this to you. So Peter got a revelation from God that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God. And then in the next few sentences, he tells Jesus, he rebuked Jesus and said, you don't go, have to go to the cross. And what did Jesus say to him? Get behind me, Satan. So he wasn't talking to Peter. He was talking to the spirit behind Peter who was giving him a false, uh, uh, basically a lying and deception. I said, well, he just heard from God the Father on one hand, and the next sentence he's hearing from the devil. I'm like, wow. So that means you have to be very careful that who you're listening to, and you have to test the spirits, Right. If it's not of God, you say, I renounce it, I reject it. And, and, and even to, how can I say, it's better to be safe than sorry. If you're not sure, to say, okay, God, I reject it until you confirm it again. God should confirm something to you two or three times until you're ready. And, um, and then you'll know. And again, I don't know, I'm just saying this to, not to, if Father, perfect love casts out fear. I'm not trying to create any fear. We should be in a deep enough relationship that Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice. So when you hear the voice of the shepherd, we can obey it. But when we hear what I call the, the wolf in sheep's clothing, we have to reject it. Wow. Praise God. Okay, we're going to break off all religious mindset, all lies and deceptions today. And we're going in for a deeper intimate relationship with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who leads us to God the Father. Now, where else did God the Father speak? He spoke at the, the, the water baptism of Jesus where he said, This is my beloved Son, with him I am well pleased. Not only Matthew 3, again in Mark 1, 11, he says the same thing. And then in, uh, let's go to uh, Matthew 17, verse 1, because the transfiguration is another time where the Father speaks. And if we study the times when God speaks, it, it just helps us, I feel, hear his voice. And you have to understand the heart and the attribute of God. What is the motive behind why people are saying certain things? So Matthew 17 says, after six days, Jesus took Peter, James, and his brother John and led them up on a high mountain by themselves. So only three of the 12 apostles had this amazing experience called the transfiguration. Verse 2 says, He was transfigured in front of them, and his face shone like the sun. His clothes became as white as, white as the light. Suddenly Moses and Elijah appeared to them, talking with him. Then Peter said to Jesus, Lord, it's good for us to be here. If you want, I will set up three shelters here, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. Now there's so much deep revelation in here, which I think we've talked about before, but I just want to share that uh, a transfiguration means a complete change of form or appearance. 
So do you realize that Jesus was a physical man, he was in physical form, but he transfigured into the spiritual form. That's how Moses and Elijah, who had already you know, ascended and gone to heaven basically, uh, they, they appeared in their spiritual form. We get a spiritual body when you go to heaven, does everyone realize that? And so uh, Jesus was showing that he can go from physical to spiritual form effortlessly, that he has the power to do that. And so when Christ's appearance, uh, when his appearance, in, it says radiant glory, he appeared to his three disciples and uh, not only Matthew 17, 2, but again in Mark 9, 2 and 3, and then finally Luke 9, 28, 36. So we have all three of the synoptic gospels talk about this transfiguration experience, and it symbolizes the life to come. Who got caught up to heaven? Elijah, Enoch. That's almost like a, a precursor or foreshadowing of the rapture, where everyone is caught up in the air instantaneously in the twinkling of an eye. Amen, we'll talk about that another time. But the other point is that uh, um, this is showing that Jesus can transfigure himself into a beautiful spiritual state and, and, um, and it had greater significance because who, did he, who appeared there was Moses and Elijah. And we already know that these are the two main components or principles of the Old Testament. Moses represents the law, and Elijah represents the prophets. And Jesus, say, My, Jesus said, I come to fulfill the law and the prophets. And, and he taught us a new covenant, a, a new commandment. He says, love God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. Love your neighbor as yourself. And then finally he says, love each other as I have loved you. There's no greater commandment than that. Love is the primary uh, 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 covenant of the New Testament. And Jesus saying that all the law and the prophets hang off of of, of his teaching of that love reigns supreme in the new covenant. Praise God. It's also foreshadowing the fulfillment of the Messiah to come again. And like I said, everyone being caught up to to the third heaven. And and, and then finally in 1 Peter 1.23, I just want to share one more revelation here. Uh, 1 Peter 1.23, if anyone's there, say Amen. First Peter 1.23. And it's interesting that Peter was a, a major leader uh, of the New Covenant Church, but he only wrote two, uh, of, of two letters here. But does anyone know another book that Peter was very influential in writing? The Gospel of Mark. Because we have Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, but a lot of people say that John Mark, who we see in the book of Acts, he wrote the Gospel of Mark, and he was also a, a disciple of Peter. So I believe he got a lot of his, of course, it's by, you know, inspired by the Holy Spirit, but I think Peter was the one who helped Mark to write the Gospel of Mark. So we, have, we do have a Gospel uh, that was very highly influenced, influenced, I believe, by the Apostle Peter. But now in his uh, one letter here, uh, first, uh, uh, first Peter one twenty three. He says, "Because you have been born again, not of perishable seed, but of imperishable, through the living and enduring Word of God." So this is what happens when someone is born again. We are born with what perishable seed. What does that mean? We are not eternal, and we will not live forever. You're only on planet Earth for a certain amount of time. Uh, according to Genesis six, God has given everyone one hundred and twenty years on planet Earth. That was the, the limit got set to Moses after the flood. And, and, but he, he prophesied in Genesis chapter 6. So Christ said, heaven and earth will pass away, but my word will never pass away. So the way, the way Jesus spoke, it shows that he, he was in heaven before he came to earth. And he's pre-existent. He said even to the Father in John 17, glorify me with the glory we had before the creation existed. I mean, no one ever spoke this way in the history of mankind. No prophet ever spoke that way. But Jesus spoke that way. Why? Because he is God in human form. He's God in the flesh. He's the son of God. And he and he, he was born of imperishable seed. Do you see the difference? Every person on planet Earth was born with what? Corruptible or perishable seed. How about Moses? Was he born by a perishable seed? I just want to see if everyone's paying attention. <laughs> yes. Was, was David, King David, born of perishable seed? Yes. 
How about Elijah and all the prophets we just talked about? The answer is yes. Every person born in, everyone in the Bible was born of perishable seed. Christ was the only one who came to earth. How? Born by a virgin, born by imperishable seed. So he's the only one who can give anyone eternal life. Do you see that? So again, I'm bringing this to the point is that there's so many false religions in the world, so many philosophies that make absolutely no sense, and yet people are following because that's what they've been taught, and they don't question it. If you don't question it, then you will not find the truth. You will never even seek the truth. God says, knock and the door will be open. Ask and you shall receive. But I love this one. Seek and you will find. If you seek for truth, you will find truth. But you have to look for it. And, and this is what I'm saying is that Christ shows that there's no other way to the Father except through Him. Because He's the only one born of imperishable seed. And because of that, He can give eternal life to whom He chooses and who accepts Him as Lord and Savior. Praise God. Now I'm going to end this off very short today because I want to get into a time of prayer. But we see God speaking only a few times in the Gospels and in the New Testament, but Christ is a full representation of God the Father. And so every word that Jesus spoke, he's saying, it's coming from the Father. And what did Jesus speak when he was on the cross? One of his very last words. There's seven things that Jesus spoke when he was on the cross. I have a teaching called the seven sayings of Christ while he was on the cross. But there was one thing he said in Aramaic. Remember last time I said Jesus spoke a few words in Aramaic? One of them is Eli, Eli, Lamat Sabachthani, which means my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Uh, Matthew and Mark, I believe, both uh, uh, cover that exact wording. And where does that come from? Does anyone know where, when Jesus spoke that, what was he saying? What was he quoting? Psalm 22. Let's all turn over to Psalm 22. And this was written by King David in 1000 BC. Can you imagine 1000 years before Christ comes to earth, King David was not only a king, but he was very prophetic. And a lot of the things the Psalms are, that, king wrote, that David wrote in the Psalms are very prophetic because he would go deep into worship and hear the voice of God, and he wrote it in Psalm 22, verse 1 says, My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? So when Jesus was on the cross, he was actually quoting scripture. Did anyone know that? This is amazing to me that Jesus was not just saying anything. If someone is truly going through crucifixion, it is under that much pain and suffering, they're not going to say just anything. I, I, I'm saying it's not normal for him to to speak something which has so much deep spiritual significance, which was written about a thousand years before. So I feel that's just one way of Christ saying, I am the Messiah. And he's quoting the prophecy of King David. Does everyone see that? I know I'm just slowing down on here. My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? But let me continue reading uh, what King David wrote in verse 12. He says, many bulls surround me, strong ones of Bashan encircle me. They open their mouths against me, lions mauling and roaring. I am poured out like water and all my bones are disjointed. My heart is like wax melting within me. My strength is dried up like baked clay. My tongue sticks to the roof of my mouth. You put me into the dust of death. Uh, for dogs have surrounded me, a gang of evildoers has enclosed on me. They pierced my hands and my feet. Now when I read this, I'm like, my God, King David, a thousand years before Jesus comes to earth as the Son of God, as the Messiah, is perfectly describing or depicting the crucifixion. Has anyone ever seen this before? This is so powerful that even King David, it was not only Isaiah the prophet that, that wrote about it in Isaiah 53, but now King David in Psalm 22 is saying, they pierced my hands and my feet. So it's a, this is a messianic prophecy. He's talking about Christ Jesus, the, the Messiah, who would be go to the cross. And then look, verse 17, it says, I, count, I can count all my bones. People look and stare at me. They divided my garments among themselves. Isn't that what the Romans did? They divided the garments of Jesus, his robe. It says, and they cast lots for my clothing, but you, Lord, don't be far away. My strength come quickly to help me rescue my life from the sword and my only life from the power of these dogs. Save me from the lion's mouth and from the horns of wild oxen. Praise God. So I just love the fact that King David uh, gave us the prophetic word 
Jesus fulfilled it perfectly, and then he spoke these words when he's on the cross to confirm that yes, indeed, he is the Messiah, and he's crying out to God the Father, saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? I just found it so perfectly, you know, like how perfectly Jesus fulfilled everything is just amazing to me. Now, I want to just share one last thing, because God works a lot in threes. There's three scriptures on Abba Father about the spirit of adoption. Um, and, and there's three times where the transfiguration shows up in scripture. But I want to take us to John chapter 20 before we end and pray here. And can someone just turn to Deuteronomy 32 verse 6? Actually, you know what? Let me do that myself. Let's go to Deuteronomy 20, uh, 32 verse 6. This is Moses writing in the Torah, Deuteronomy 32 verse 6. And let's see what it says. Is this how you repay the Lord, you foolish and senseless people? Isn't he your father and creator? Didn't he make you and sustain you? Remember the days of old. Consider the years of past generations. Ask your father and he will tell you, your elders, and they will teach you. When the Most High gave the nations their inheritance and divided the human race, he set the boundaries of peoples according to the number of the people of Israel. But the Lord's portion is his people, Jacob, his own inheritance. I just want to take us back to verse 6 of Deuteronomy 32. It says, is this how you repay the Lord, you foolish and senseless people? Isn't he your father and creator? So here we have Moses referring to God as, as father and creator. In the New Testament, James 1.17 says, uh, God is like the father of lights. In him is no shifting. He does not change like shifting shadows. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. All good and perfect things come from God the Father. So I'm, I'm coming back here to say that the Old Testament prophets did recognize God as Father, but they didn't really come into the full understanding of the fact that that's a deeper intimate relationship God wants until Jesus came to fulfill the role of Messiah and reconcile us back to the Father to have the same relationship he had with Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. Praise God. Isn't that powerful? And then finally, where were we going before Deuteronomy 32.6? And again, and the reason why I stopped there is I want to show the difference clearly between religion and relationship. If anyone who is watching right now, and I don't know why I'm going to say this, but if you come from an Islamic background or Muslim religion, they do not call God Father. Why? Because they don't have a personal relationship. So this is the difference between religion, which is false, and God, who is true. There's only one God. Does everyone agree that the only creator is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob? That's the way God referred to himself at the burning bush. I am the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the great I am that I am. So everyone who does not know God in that manner is not in the covenant of God. So there's a lot of people following false religions. They're calling God different names, but they have no personal relationship. In fact, some of my Muslim friends said that they didn't even know you could hear God's voice. They, don't, they just pray repetitious prayers the way they're taught, but they don't know you can hear God's voice. And, 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 and this is the, 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 the funniest thing is today, the, you know, we, we not only hear God's voice, but we, um, it, it's not something that happens just once in a while. We should be hearing God on a continual, ongoing basis. Does this make sense? So this is the difference between religion and relationship. And this could go for anyone. This could go for Hindus, Sikhs. Uh, now I am mentioning the names I was going to mention before for Jehovah Witness and Mormons and even Catholics and all different people out there. People say they know about God, but do they have a personal relationship with Him? And that's where they say the rubber meets the road. Are you truly born again of the Spirit? Are you truly saved? And if not, this is your day of salvation. And so I, want, I believe God wants to give everyone that opportunity to know Him personally as your Heavenly Father. And that's why for God so loved the world, John 3, 16, that He gave His only begotten Son, that whoever should believe in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And so Christ is God's free gift of grace and salvation to the whole world. And, and this is why I believe we're preaching today to populate heaven one soul at a time. And we're believing that someone watching online is going to accept Christ as Lord and Savior today. And let us know if you're watching, 
and say yes to Jesus today. Let's finish off with John 20, and then I'm going to call on and Prophetess Andrea one more time to pray if you're ready for that, and anyone else who wants to pray for our online audience. In John chapter 20, verse 17, um, this is a, a, an instant on the resurrection day, Sunday, the very first day of the week when, when Jesus resurrected on the third day. It says in verse 16, Jesus appears to Mary Magdalene. And turning around, he, she said to him in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. And Jesus said in verse 17, don't cling to me since I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and tell them that I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. This is so significant because even though there's many scripture verses which allude to the fact that Jesus Christ is uh, uh, he's one with the Father, the, the way Jesus speaks, he wants us to have a relationship with God as Father. Do you see that? Because Jesus called God his Father and our Father. Let me repeat that again. So Jesus said, but, but go to your brothers and tell them that I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. So Jesus called the Father his God and our God, his Father and our Father. And that's why when he even taught us the Lord's Prayer, he said we should pray our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And you know the rest, praise God. So today it's about establishing the kingdom of God on earth, but having a proper relationship with our Heavenly Father. Because I think one of the biggest issues in the world today, believe it or not, is fatherlessness. Does everyone know that? A lot of people who end up in jail and prison, it's because they don't, they're lacking a father figure. They, and, and we talked a little bit about a, 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 a orphan spirit last week, how people can get healed and delivered from the orphan spirit. But, but they have that fatherly love and that fatherly relationship is what we are born to, to be, um, expect. And so people need the love of the Father in order to be healed. And inner healing comes from receiving the love of your Heavenly Father. So Father, I thank you today that many people have accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. But the whole goal of that is to be reconciled to our Heavenly Father and to receive the love of our Heavenly Father and to have our, our cup overfilled, flowing, overflowing with the agape love of God. And so, Father, I pray today that if anyone heard a gospel message about accepting Christ as Lord and Savior, but then they didn't go even any further to understand their Heavenly Father and receive the love of the Father, I pray you will help people go deeper into their spiritual walk today, Father God, and to grow up into that uh, a relationship and maturity, spirit of maturity of relationship with God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We thank you, Father. We give you praise, glory, and honor in your mighty holy name. Amen and amen. Praise God. I believe some healing is happening. Inner healing is happening for those watching online. We just say, Come, Lord Jesus, and forgive my sin and, and, and come dwell within me. He will come and start the sanctification process. I'm going to just call on Reverend Andrew or getting a word he'd like to pray for the online audience. Not yet? Okay, praise God. Let's get ready for offering and communion. Uh, did you enjoy this uh, short teaching, I believe, today on the love of the Father and the power of His words? And we just need to meditate more on the words of God the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. We're going to get to all that in the next few weeks. But I thank you, Lord, that um, I want to be able to speak the way Jesus spoke about God the Father. I want to be able to have that relationship that Jesus modeled so perfectly for us. Let's read Romans 8 as we get ready for offering today. Romans 8, 15. This is what Apostle Paul said after his born-again experience. Romans 8, verse 15, it says, for you, for you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear. Instead, you received adoption. So you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. The spirit himself testifies together with our spirit that we are God's children. And if children, also heirs and heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ, if indeed we suffer with him so that we may also be glorified with him. 
Praise God. So we're going to be, uh, receive a spiritual body. We're going to be glorified. It's called the, glor the glorification. That's another big teaching we're going to get to. But thank you, Father, for all this wisdom and revelation and knowledge today. That when we are born again in the spirit, you become a joint heir in the kingdom of God, a co-heir with Christ. And Christ is the firstborn among many. And as part of the body of Christ, we become, uh, we receive the blessings of Abraham that flows through us. We're grafted into the body of Christ, Lord, through Jesus Christ, the Messiah. He came to bring both Jew and Gentile as one man into the kingdom of God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And that's another way we know that Jesus fulfilled his calling and, and purpose perfectly. That he fulfilled the role of what the Messiah is supposed to do, which is bring everyone to the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob as one new man. Praise God. That's so powerful. Uh, any word coming yet? We're praying. Reggie, would you like to pray today? Sure. Yeah, come on up and pray. Grab the other mic on the front. And Andrea, do you have a word yet? No. no? Okay, praise God. She only comes when she gets a word, and that's good because you don't want to just... We, you know, sometimes we put a demand on the giftings, but we have to flow with the Holy Spirit. So when He speaks to us, then we flow in the prophetic. Uh, Reggie, just pray for our online audience and even those here, whatever you feel that to pray today. Praise God. Uh, dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, God. Dear God, I pray for the online audience and everyone here today, oh God. That they would receive the word that was sent forth, oh God. In spirit and in truth, it would be a blessing through their life, oh God. Heavenly Father, we know according to the word of God, it is sharper than a double-edged sword, oh God. Heavenly Father, in their life, in their soul, oh God, where there needs to be healing, let there be healing, oh God. As the word goes forth, oh God, went forth, let there be deliverance, oh God, to the online audience, oh God. Let there be healing, oh God. Dear Heavenly Father, let there be breakthrough, oh God, where there needs to be breakthrough, oh God. Let there be breakthrough, oh God. Dear Heavenly Father, oh God, I come against every attack of Satan over their lives, oh God. Those that are suffering from depression, oh God, let there be healing. Those that are worrying, oh God, about how the bills are going to be paid, oh God. I ask, oh God, you Jehovah God would provide for them supernaturally, oh God. Dear Heavenly Father, and they would come to know who you are in a greater measure, oh God, their Heavenly Father. God, I thank you for the work you are doing, oh God, in the lives of everyone in Third Heaven Ministry, oh God, and in the lives of everyone that is watching online, oh God. Their Heavenly Father, I also declare, oh God, by faith, oh God, by the power of the Holy Spirit, oh God, that this place, oh God, is going to be filled, oh God, to overflow, oh God, their Heavenly Father. Their God, I come in agreement with my brothers and sisters in Christ, oh God, and declare, oh God, their Heavenly Father, that every brokenhearted person, oh God, everyone that is, that is in need of a healer, oh God, will be drawn, oh God, by the power of the Holy Ghost to turn heaven ministry, oh God. I thank you, Jesus, for what you are doing, oh God, and the amazing, wonderful things, oh God, that is to come, oh God, for the online audience and for everyone, oh God, in third ministry, oh God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Thank you so much, Reggie. That's powerful. I feel that someone was touched by that prayer today. And we got some very good news this past week. I want to thank you all for your loyalty and dedication to Third Heaven Ministries. People have been watching us online. And a television a producer who has a television studio in Toronto, your Yorkville Mall, called me this week. And praise God. Let me just lower this music a little. Before we go deeper into worship, I just want to say that... Um, uh, I was so touched because as a friend from many years ago, I haven't seen in years, he goes, wow, I saw one of your broadcasts on Facebook Live. He goes, you're a true man of God, and we want you to come and preach free of charge. Totally, the whole television studio is open for us to go and preach in Toronto this month of September, and I believe ongoing even into October. And, but he also said he wants me to get someone to help him preach in Italian and Spanish. Well, I think just Italian for now, but I believe it will be Italian and Spanish as we go. So, Father, I, pr I pray that people who are ready to step forward into another level of ministry, Lord, we're praying for the translators for Italian 
in Spanish. I can speak a little Italian, but I told him, is, if I'm going to preach, <laughs> I'd rather have a translator. <laughs> but Father, I thank you, Lord God, you're raising up many more people than those yes, that are God. wedding, willing to go to higher heights. God has the, the opportunities waiting for you, but he wants to know that your heart is correct before he takes you to the higher heights and, 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 and deeper depths of the spirit, Father God, because he needs those who he can trust to deliver the message that he wants. Uh, um, uh, thank you, Lord, about God. So not the message that we want, or not the message that the world wants, but that's to be the message that the kingdom of God needs and wants. So I thank you today, Father God, for that open door for Third Heaven Ministries, and we're going to be going live to, I believe, hundreds and maybe even thousands of people across Canada, across the nations of the world. It's actually a worldwide reach, Father God, and I thank you, Father God, that you for that favor upon our ministry and everyone who's sowing seed into this ministry or just partnering with us financially or in prayer, that those same open doors will will start to open. I see open doors now for those people who are receiving and believing it by faith. Thank you, Lord. Just take it and receive it. I declare open doors for every ministry who's a remnant ministry, a remnant church, ready to go to the next level. It rise up. The world needs a, a, a ministry now more than ever. The world needs love more than ever. The world needs the kingdom of God to go forth in the light of Christ to shine. And I pray, Father God, that we are rising up to a new level here, Father God, to soar. I see a soaring into the heavenly realms, Father God, and I thank you that you're, you're saying, well done, my good and faithful children, Lord. God is raising up more of his children to do the work of the kingdom of God in faithfulness and loyalty. My God, he keeps coming to me. Thank you, Lord God, that we want to hear, well done, my good and faithful children, not only servants, but we are children of God, and God is going to fulfill his mandate and kingdom through us in these last days in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Praise God. Let's give the Lord a big shout of praise and hallelujah. So good things are coming. I said I had good news for Third Heaven Ministries. Let me just turn this down a little bit. We're going to go into a time of, of uh, communion and offering. But if you tap into what God is doing, you... Wow, thank you, Lord God. Part of this is that you have to be under the right ministry and covering because that anointing flows through the ministry into your lives. And this is what I've noticed when I've partnered with the wrong ministries. Suddenly, sometimes even your finances can stop flowing, right? Because you're not partnered correctly according to God's will. And so we break off that false... Uh, wow, thank you, Lord God. Any ungodly soul ties with the wrong people yes. who are actually... Been, they're, they're, oh, shut up. Oh, just pray in the spirit of all everyone. Just keep praying the spirit of the I feel like the dam is breaking right now because what I was going to say, shut down. The anointing breaks through the yoke, Lord God. We sever and break any ungodly soul ties with the wrong people, Father God, that are hindering. We break all hindrances, Father, in Jesus' mighty name. We want the flow of the Holy Spirit, the flow of finances, the flow of health, health and prosperity, the flow of provision, Lord God. Let your provision flow in a greater measure, Lord God. We speak abundance, supernatural overflow, Father. Your people today, Rabba Soto Robo Shikiraba Shandai, Rebe Sikiraba Sandai, Randa Rabba Soto Robo Sikibo Shandai. Praise God, Rabba Sandai, Rabba Sikibo Shandai. Praise God, praise God. I'm going to share more on this later because there's a wealth transfer coming into the kingdom of God. We have to be properly aligned, and I speak that word there. Yeah, wealth well, transfer into your life for those who are, uh, oh, thank you, Lord, fully surrendered, 100% given over to the kingdom of God and the purposes of God. Then we're praying for God's full kingdom provision. Where there's a vision, there will be provision. So I thank you for our own church building. Wow, praise God. Thank you, Lord God. We're going to start our own church building very soon, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God. Help us Lord, to get our own facility, Lord God. We're praying for our own church facility to have revival services, Father God, not only weekly, but I'm even seeing daily worship, Father God, prayer intercession, I'm seeing evangelism, and I'm seeing television and radio uh, ministry coming, Father, social media, so many things are all coming from the new location you have for us, Lord God, and we're just believing by faith, and anyone feels in their heart that God is putting it onto your heart to sow into the new church building fund, the facility, let us know, because we're going to get start moving in that direction. And God's going to do great things. Wow, thank you, Lord God. This year, 2020, all the way to 2020, 
too. I'm seeing lots of amazing things opening up in God's uh, kingdom of power and messages going forth in the greater authority. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Now are you getting a word, Adrian? <laughs> no? Okay, let's get the offering ready. I just feel this wealth uh, message is going to go across because if you sever all ties with people who are hindering your blessings, It'll allow, like, I feel, okay, I, sometimes I gotta find a way to just speak what I'm seeing, but like the dam is breaking because when you sever all ungodly soul ties, wow, thank you, Lord God, now that water of the Holy Spirit just flows freely, amen? So praise God, there's free flow today that all the provision that's required for your calling will be there for you. Thank you, Lord. Honey. Praise God. Online, you can give through thirdheaven.org. And or PayPal, um, sorry, you can do an e-transfer if you'd like to donate at thirdheaven.org. That's the easiest way that I like to give online is through the email, donate at thirdheaven.org. And then um, you don't even have to fill up the envelope, right? <laughs> Praise God. Uh, so uh, who's going to pray over the offering today? Can, can I ask Amelia, would you like to pray for the offering? Praise God. We have a, a woman of God visiting today, and uh, I know she's a powerful prayer intercessor, so uh, take the mic on the front, and um, uh, the, uh, the, the, the microphone there, and just uh, let's, let have her, let's have her pray over the offering. Praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus.
for the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the righteous. And we thank you, Lord, that everyone who has given unto this Lord God, through this ministry, and those, oh Lord, who couldn't come today, but have given, oh God, and those who could not give, Lord God, I pray for increase. I pray, Lord, oh God, that you will visit them, divine visitation, oh Lord, Father, to give them, oh God, ideas, Lord God, love creations, oh God, that, Lord, nothing can stop them in this pandemic, nothing, oh God, can stop them in the famine, that, Lord, you have blessed, even, oh God, shows up in the midst of famine, your people will rise up to be a blessing to your people, to many nations, hallelujah. Father, I thank you for promotions. I thank you for new businesses operating, oh God, hallelujah. At this time, Lord, it will multiply. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord. Father, we give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. I'm so glad to ask for prayer there. The prayer intercessors are rising at Third Heaven Ministries. Amen. Amen. Is that what we give the Lord a shout of praise? Amen, amen, praise God. Yesterday was wonderful outside. We had a lot of prayer intercessors rise up to the occasion. And today again, I thank you, woman of God, for praying for us. We're gonna do communion, but I would like to go offline so we can have more privacy in the... Do you have a word to pray for the online audience yet, Andrew, you're okay? Okay, God bless y'all. Everyone, let's say shalom, peace. Everyone watching online, let us know if you've accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior uh, today, and we'll be in touch with you. Get ready to see us live on, I believe it's called Go Live TV, very soon in the month of September and October. Amen. Shalom. Let's say goodbye to our online audience.